hello and a really warm welcome to the next part of our eating, drinking and swallowing e-learning awareness resource. For this next section, we're going to focus on nutritional management. My name is Libby Russell. And my name is Georgina Brooks. And we are both community dietitians working with Serona Care and Health and provide a dietetic service across Bristol, North Somerset and also South Gloucestershire. We work very closely with the community learning disability teams within each of these localities. This is an awareness training and is usually provided as a one day course. However, due to the current coronavirus pandemic, we have suspended all face to face training. Please be aware that this session does not replace this training and as soon as we're able to, we will provide this course. This short session has been designed to complement the Health Education England Dysphagia e-learning programme. We would strongly advise that you complete this training programme prior to watching this awareness session. Please look out for the links for videos to watch in your own time. So now just to go through today's aim and learning outcomes. So our overall aim is to increase your awareness of malnutrition in adults with learning disabilities and to be able to identify those at risk and how to treat the malnutrition. And our learning outcomes for you as carers and care staff to be aware of nutritional screening using something called the MUST tool and also to be aware of how you develop an appropriate action plan following screening and how you might devise a personalised nutritional care plan. Today we will cover why adults with learning disabilities are more at risk of dysphagia and nutrition, causes and consequences of malnutrition, screening for malnutrition, food fortification and also helpful signposting and further information. Now let's take a look at what is malnutrition. So we've got our definition here um, and you can see that it's from NICE. A state in which a deficiency of nutrients such as energy, protein, vitamins and minerals causes measurable adverse effects on body composition, function and clinical outcome. For the purposes of this awareness session, we will be focusing on undernutrition. People with a learning disability can have worse health than people without a learning disability and are more likely to experience a number of health problems, including dysphagia. Difficulties with eating, drinking and swallowing will often have a big impact on the amount and type of foods which a person is able to manage and can be a factor in malnutrition if it is not managed effectively. This, together with a number of additional factors, can increase the risk of malnutrition further in adults with learning disabilities. Other additional factors include other health conditions such as epilepsy. This can affect nutritional intake as seizure activity can often lead to missed or delayed meals. Mental health conditions such as depression and anxiety which can lead to a poor intake through reduced appetite or where there may, may be drug or alcohol abuse in addition. Some cancers and its associated treatments such as chemotherapy can affect appetite and nutritional intake. Other long-term chronic diseases, such as chronic obstructive airways disease, and those with dementia and other cognitive impairments. And it's worth remembering that people with Down syndrome can have an increased risk of developing dementia. Physical factors include oral difficulties, such as, such as ill-fitting dentures, making eating painful or dental pain where dental services have not been accessed, pain not being treated appropriately, and the person being unable to communicate pain. Difficulties with dexterity and being physically unable to feed themselves and any change in physical health. Social factors include living alone and being socially isolated, a lack of regular cooked meals and also inadequate finances to support a balanced diet. Carers and service users having a limited knowledge about nutrition or reliance on others for mealtime support. The current pandemic has also influenced food availability and people's mood and mental well-being. And any change in social circumstances for that person can impact on their desire to want to eat and drink, for example, a change in care staff or routine for that person. Medications include that people with learning difficulties are often on many different medications, which is known as polypharmacy. This can affect appetite, taste, smell, alertness levels and can contribute to constipation. All these factors have an impact on nutritional intake and therefore their risk of malnutrition. We found out a little bit more about the causes of malnutrition, but what are the consequences of malnutrition? 
we can see by the pictures on this slide that malnutrition can affect all parts of the body. Malnutrition affects every system in the body and always results in increased vulnerability to illness, increased complications and in very extreme cases even death. Let's take a look at each one in a bit more detail. Weight loss. This is often what is detected first. It's important to remember that weight loss will not be exclusive to just losing fat stores but also muscle mass too. This can have a big impact on muscle weakness and wastage and can affect somebody's mobility. If somebody's mobility has decreased, they then may find themselves spending more time in bed or in a chair, which can then go on to increase their risk of developing pressure injuries. Muscle mass can be lost from respiratory and cardiac muscle. If you consider respiratory muscles and the importance of coughing in protecting a person's airways when they're eating and drinking, then a cough may not be as effective and this can lead to increased chest infections. In turn, the immune system may be weakened, so the ability to fight off infections might be compromised. Another consequence would be the psychological impact of malnutrition. It is often really underestimated and again can be a vicious cycle if somebody's mental health deteriorates and this can lead to them spending more time in bed or on their own. They can then have further, further social isolation and depression. Malnutrition is one of the main causes of pressure injury development and it leads to prolonged wound healing, increased risk of infection, which again can be challenging to treat if the person's immune function is compromised. Evidence shows us malnutrition can lead to a 30% longer stay in hospital and likely that someone will be discharged into long-term care facilities. There is also an increased risk of them being readmitted post-discharge from hospital. Further consequences include reduced mobility and increased falls. Bones and muscles in a malnourished body are more easily damaged and take longer to heal. Adults with learning disabilities are more at risk of constipation, which is a co another consequence of malnutrition, and this in turn would affect an individual's appetite and therefore intake. It is important that bowel habits are monitored really closely. It may require further dietary management or medication. We know that malnutrition can affect the function of our kidneys. This can cause an inability to regulate salt and fluid, which can lead to dehydration or overhydration. It is really important that if there's no obvious cause of weight loss, then the GP is contacted as soon as possible. We would also recommend you contact the GP for a medication review if somebody has lost a significant amount of weight. They may be taking a too high a dose of medications and therefore suffering from unnecessary side effects of their medication. You can see from this slide the causes and consequences of malnutrition overlap. Good nutrition is one of the most important parts of health and prevention of ill health. On this slide you can see two links, one on a must webinar and one on the patient association checklist. You can pause the video now and take a photo or write down the links. Some of you may be already familiar with and use a nutritional screening tool in your place of work. The MUST screening tool or Malnutrition Universal screening tool is a gold standard validated tool and is recognised in healthcare settings. In this awareness session, we will not be taking you through how to identify those at risk of malnutrition using the MUST. Instead, we will direct you to a video that we would recommend you watch. This will take you through all the necessary steps to be confident and competent at using MUST. We would like to thank Berkshire Healthcare for allowing us to use their resources to support this session. All homes under CQC legislation must be using a screening tool and we would recommend MUST. For those care settings or providers who are not under CQC, we recommend that MUST could be adopted or the use of a nutritional checklist devised by the Patients Association. From watching the webinar on using the MUST tool, you can see a MUST score is calculated by using four very simple steps. This gives an associated risk for malnutrition. The MUST score can therefore be used to identify the nutritional goal which is outlined in step five of the MUST tool. Those scoring a MUST of zero, so in the green section on our screen, the nutritional goal would be to maintain current weight and maintain nutritional intake. We would encourage healthy eating. If a BMI for somebody is over 30, 
then you should think about promoting weight loss. This can be done by reducing portion sizes and providing information on healthy snacks and drinks. Those with a must score of one, so in the middle, in the amber section, the nutritional goal would be to prevent further weight loss and increase, a health, increase their weight to a healthy BMI where necessary. We would also recommend improving nutritional intake as a goal. For those in the red, scoring a must of two or more, so the high risk, their nutritional goal would be to prevent further weight loss, increase weight to achieve a healthy BMI and improve nutritional intake. It's really important to remember to set nutritional goals after you've calculated somebody's risk of malnutrition. You can then use the associated must score to make a clear, personalised nutritional care plan. So, for a must zero, consider giving healthy diet information. For a must one, consider all the factors affecting oral intake, which we have already discussed. Encourage two nourishing drinks a day and two nourishing snacks, and also fortify food where possible. We would also encourage you to start food and fluid record chart. These approaches can be really successful at adding both extra protein and calories to prevent further weight loss and increase weight if necessary. For a must of two or more, we would recommend that you do exactly as for a must of one. However, if there has been no or very little improvement in a month, then consider a referral to Serona Community Dietitians. You can also contact the GP who can start first line oral nutritional supplements. It is really important that when you implement a nutritional care plan, that the person's speech and language therapy eating and drinking guidelines are taken into account and that all food and drink provided is in line with their correct IBSI level. Food first resources. It may be worth you pausing the session here or taking a photo of this slide so you have a copy of the links. Under our Serona leaflet library, you will find all the relevant information to support eating well. There is a wide variety of resources, including 100 calorie boosters, eating well with a poor appetite, some nourishing drinks recipes, fortified milk recipes, um, a guide on eating well to heal well, particularly helpful for anybody that's got any wounds or pressure injuries, keeping hydrated, and also lots of accessible, easy read resources available for you too. We would also encourage you to have a look at the Park Berkshire Healthcare videos as we mentioned earlier. They've got really helpful tips on food fortification including videos on this. We would like to thank Berkshire Healthcare Nutrition and Dietetic Department again who have kindly agreed that we can share their resources. If you use the internet to look at Remedy you can find the Serona Dietitians referral pathway. We accept referrals for anyone with a learning disability and a must score of two or more. If you have any further concerns, then please speak with the Service Users GP. We hope you have found this awareness session useful and that you now feel confident and competent with identifying malnutrition and also how you would implement a nutritional care plan. It is really important that when you implement a nutritional care plan, that the person's speech and language therapy, eating and drinking guidelines are taken into account and that all food and drink provided is in line with their correct IBSI level. We hope that you found this session helpful. Thank you for listening.